So growing up playing football, when exactly did you start playing? I think it was around second grade that I started playing football. I started playing baseball earlier, uh, and I've always just like told my dad, told my mom, hey, I want to play football, I want to play football, but you can't start football as early as you can baseball, you know, because it's contact. But yeah. as soon as I could, I started playing. All right, and who was your favorite coach growing up throughout elementary school, middle school, high school, and how well did your family support you through that process? Uh, favorite coach was probably my dad coming up because he was a really big part of it, you know. Uh, so he always he was always my, my sports guy to, to, to go to if I had a question, you know. I always went to my dad, and he always knew a lot, you know. Uh, now it's kind of gotten over his head, you know, from some of the football stuff. But growing up as a kid, when I was younger in elementary school and stuff, all the way up through, I think, middle school, is he coached me, and so he was my he was my favorite coach, I think. Usually, for all athletes, you know that there's a point where you just fall in love with the sport. For you, you have two. So is there, like, a specific memory where you – you know, remember. All right, this is what I want to do. Uh, I've always, I've always really, really enjoyed uh, both football and baseball. And a lot of people ask, which one do you like better? You know, and so it's a really tough question for me because I love them both so much. It's like, I think a similar question would be, who do you like better, your mom or your dad? And at that point, you're like, well, sometimes I like my mom, and sometimes I like my dad. You know, it just depends on what situation you're in. So uh, um, it's just really what season it is for me. But when I, when I first started playing both sports, is when I really knew like these are. I really, I really enjoy doing this. Um, so, coming out of high school, big prospect, you had a lot of offers um, to play both baseball and football. What made you choose on this? It's actually a really, really crazy story. It's just a long story. Do you want to hear the story? Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry. All right. So, it's, it, I think it's, um, I think it's really hard not to see God working through this whole thing. Um, so, for my timeline, I wanted to be done before senior year in football because if you commit somewhere you can say okay if I get hurt then I'm covered I'm committed somewhere I don't have to worry about they're gonna pull a scholarship just because I got hurt or something and so uh, so I wanted to be done before my senior year of football and so I go on these all recruiting trips like unofficial visits driving all over the country it was, it was really cool me and my mom and my dad would uh, get in the big car we would lay all the seats down in the back and like put a mattress pad on it and uh, we would take turns like just driving. One would sleep and then two would stay up and then we would just rotate like that. And so it was a lot of fun just to get to drive around with them. But um, I went and saw a lot of places. Uh, I got it down to between Georgia and North Carolina. And so, um, and while that was going on, Ole Miss wanted me as, uh, but they didn't want me a quarterback. They wanted me to play a slot receiver or defensive back. And so it's not really what I wanted to do. So I kind of shut that door. And so, uh, I told myself, I'm going to go, if Georgia calls me and say, hey, we want you, you're our guy, because it, well, there was this big thing going on with, they had 10 guys come throw for Georgia, and they said, hey, we're going to call you at the end of the week, because I just came through for them, we're going to call you at the end of the week when all 10 guys come, and we'll let you know, hey, you're our guy, or hey, you're not our guy. And so, I'm thinking, I go throw, and I go back home, and I'm, I've prayed about it, I think, hey, if, if they call me, I think that's where I need to be, I think I need to be in Georgia. And so uh, they call me and say, well, I'm actually driving to North Carolina this weekend, that, that, that weekend. And so I say, if they, if they call me, I'm coming to Georgia. But if not, I'm going to commit to North Carolina when I drive up here this weekend. I'm driving to North Carolina, driving to go to commit to North Carolina. Georgia calls me and says, hey, we want you. So we turn the car around, drive to Georgia, commit to Georgia. So, and then North Carolina was upset because they didn't feel like they had a fair shake. And... Um, Recruiting was really, really a stressful process, but uh, I thought I got it right. And so I uh, went through senior year, uh, gets close to early signing period. Georgia calls me and says, hey, we want to blue shirt you. I had no idea what that meant. Um, and so I kind of figured it out. <clears throat> it means you, can, you pay for the summer when you first get there, but when you uh, start school, you're on scholarship. So in the big reality of things, it, was, it wasn't a big deal. I can get a loan. I can pay for the summer. It's not that big of a deal, you know. But uh, it just kind of showed me where I was. Uh, priority wise in their eyes you know and so I kind of took a step back and just kind of reopened my recruiting a little bit and so while I was committed to Georgia some stuff happened North Carolina got the offensive coordinator that was at Ole Miss and coach Rich Rod got the job at Ole Miss and so if I would have committed to North Carolina and then this new offensive coordinator would come in he would want me to play DB or slot receiver he didn't really want me as a quarterback and so I think it was really neat uh, thing that God closed the door there, and then Rich Rod comes in. And he 
I fit his uh, offense pretty well. And uh, I, think, I think he closed doors and opened doors that were, uh, were supposed to be closed and opened. And so um, at the end of the day, I took, I reopened it. I, I looked at uh, Ole Miss, uh, Mississippi State, Auburn, uh, and Florida State, the really ones I kind of got uh, close to, to, to the coaching staff and ended up here at uh, Ole Miss. And I'm, I'm really thankful that, that I'm here, that God put me here. So you're here because you want to play quarterback no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Some fans even here may say, may see you run and say, hey, let's why don't we put Matt Corral at quarterback and have John Rice in the backfield with him or put him in the slot. What do you say to people that think you should move um, out from behind the center? Um, I think kind of it's a, it's a compliment and they're not really meaning to. You know, uh, they see me as an athlete and I, I think that's really neat uh, because I don't think a lot of – quarterbacks can can run and so I think I kind of add that dynamic you know and so um, to, to them I would say that sounds smart but I, I kind of in my eyes I, I kind of want to be a quarterback. Um, now when you step onto the football field or before you step on the football field or the baseball field do you have any sort of superstitions that you do in the locker room or the day of of that game? Like sort of a good luck charm? Um, No, not that uh, I've all, I always say a prayer before the game, but that's that's other than that, I think that's about it. That's that's the only thing I got. All right. So when you were when you realized, or when did you find out you got that first start against Alabama, and what was your reaction when you realized you were getting the start? Um. So I knew Matt got hurt and he was banged up pretty bad, uh, and so once I kind of figured out that I was going to get to get to play against Alabama it was pretty it was a pretty neat thing you know because as a kid you you dream about like you either want to play against Alabama or you want to be on Alabama growing up you know because Alabama's the the top dog or whatever and so to see uh me get that opportunity um was really really a cool thing you know because as a kid you you say hey man it'd be cool to beat Alabama that'd be really really neat to just go out there and just do your thing against Alabama because as of right now, everybody considers them the best, you know. And so when I got win that I was going to be uh, getting to play against them, I was really excited about that. What um, you're obviously a true freshman, one of the younger guys on the team. Yeah. What is it like? Because we see you before the games, and you're the guy in the center of the of the huddle, firing everybody up. What is it like, kind of trying to motivate guys that might be three, four years older than you? Um. First first year player. Yeah. Uh, I think I've always kind of. <clears throat> on the football field, baseball field, I bring a lot of energy, you know, uh, I just, I, this is kind of how I am, I like to have fun, I like to win, you know, and so I think uh, guys, when they're around you that want to win, everybody kind of gets on the same, gets on the same boat, you know, when everybody's uh, want to do the same thing, it's really easy to, to uh, lead them the right way, for sure. Absolutely. Um, this last week, when Ole Miss went up against Vanderbilt, after the game, you're awarded SEC Freshman of the Week. How excited were you when you found that out? That was pretty. That was pretty neat, you know, because uh, I think SEC you kind of consider it to be one of the best conferences in college football, and to be the, the freshman of the week is, is a blessing for sure. But um, I think I ran a lot that game. I think I did a lot of rushing that game, and so uh, a lot of the guys that don't get a lot of the credit are the guys that are up front, you know, and they had a really really good game for us and uh, got a lot of pushes when we needed to get them, and uh, to have like people like Scotty. Uh, Scotty Phillips and Snoop and Ely back there that really kind of can stretch a defense or just pound it, pound it right down their throat is pretty neat. Uh, and so when you add all those dynamics together, it's pretty special. You were talking about SEC competition as being one of the toughest competitions in college football. How supportive have your teammates been? Have Matt Corral, your fellow quarterback, has been? And how, how supportive has head coach Matt Luke been in the uh, process of joining Ole Miss to now? They've been, they've been a huge process. It's, I mean, they've been a huge support in this process. You know, um, getting here, I didn't know, like, recording, recruiting, I told you all, was kind of stressful. You don't really you don't really know where you want to go at first, and then it gets really stressful. Man, I have to pick somewhere, you know. And so uh, to get here, Coach Luke and Coach Peeler were a big part of that. And uh, getting here, my teammates were really cool um, in the fact that they were really – opening uh, and welcoming, you know, and so uh, to get to meet Matt was really cool um, and get to, to learn a lot from him. He's a really smart guy, really, really smart guy. And so now that um, we both get to, 
to contribute is really a, a, a fun thing because we're both uh, in each other's corner no matter no matter what. Cool. Um, so we're gonna finish off with like a little lightning round. Lightning these, round? Yeah, these are just little, you know, fun questions. Okay. So first question: favorite NFL quarterback? Oh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron okay, Rodgers. Good answer. Um, favorite place to eat in Oxford? Oh, it was either El Agave or Toyo. Those were pretty good places. Powder blue or navy helmets? Powder blue. <laughs> there you powder go. Blue. So I assume that means powder blue baseball jerseys as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Nice. All right. Favorite baseball team? Major League Baseball team? Absolutely. Uh, Yankees. I've always been a Yankees guy since I grew up. <laughs> Nike right. or Adidas? Nike. There you Nike. Go. Yeah, just and then, aside from restaurants, what is your favorite thing to do in the city of Oxford? Oh, favorite thing to do? I've been doing a lot of football since I've been here, a lot of a lot of football and baseball. But uh, favorite thing to do in Oxford is really hang out with, with the friends that the new friends that I've made, you know, with the new friend group that I got. Cool. You got anything else? Um, well, <laughs> I know we've heard you've had a really great hobby when it comes to playing the piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think we at the newsroom. You get the table. Have a piano. Oh if you wow! Would love to play. <laughs> okay. All right. Like no pressure here. No man. pressure. See if we can uh, whip something out for y'all. <laughs> nice. It's a nice little little, little, little ditty, huh? Yeah, it's a little ditty. No, we'll, ask you, we'll ask you some questions about the piano before you can start. To play. Okay. Um, <laughs> or you could play. Put me on the spot. All right. Let's yeah. do it. Play like a little Let's do it. Something soft. So, yeah. when did you start playing the piano, and why did you start playing? The so, um. Back in the second grade, about the okay. same time I started playing football, um, I started playing the piano. And so my grandmother played piano at my church, and she was just amazing at the piano. She could, she could do it, and it was amazing. I have an older sister that started when she was in second grade. And so uh, to see Ryan start to play the piano, and, and uh, my grandmother, we call her Gran, to see Ryan and Gran get to work together and play on the piano, it was, it was really neat and something that kind of I wish I, I could do, you know. And so... Uh, my parents, they said, we're going to uh, allow you to do something that's going to help you right now or you're going to enjoy right now, which would be sports or whatever we were doing. Uh, and then we're going to allow you to do something that you can enjoy for the rest of your life, which was piano. And so uh, my older sister, me, and my younger sister all played the piano a little bit. And so that's, wow. how, that's how we got started. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if you want to play us like your, uh, <laughs> your favorite, yeah. what's the go-to? Yeah. Kind of put you on the spot here. <laughs> Oh, what do you want to hear? Ooh, I don't. We want the. I saw. I saw a video of you playing Hills and Valleys. See, yeah, but, yeah, but we, we don't really want the impressive. same thing twice. So. Yeah. <laughs> true. Let's see. Let's. See. What? What? What do y'all? What can you play? Ed Sheeran. Yeah. You want me to sing too? Yes. If you want? Yeah, yeah definitely. They used to fall, and I can't sweep you off of your feet. Will your mouth still remember the taste of my love? Will your eyes still smile from your cheeks? Cause darling, I will be loving you till we're 70. And baby, my. Heart can still fall as hard at 23. People fall in love in mysterious ways. Maybe it's all part of a plan. I just keep on making the same mistakes, hoping that you'll understand. The honey now. Take me into your loving arms Kiss me under the light of a thousand stars Oh darling, place your hand on my beating heart Just singing out loud that maybe we found love right where we are And we found love right where we are And we found love right where we are
So that. now that we're all warmed up, we will call a little audible. <laughs> Who's starting this weekend? I don't know. I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure yet. What uh, did they tell you? So it always kind of, kind of goes to a game time decision, you know. Uh, we all get a bunch of uh, reps. Me, Grant, and Matt all get a bunch of reps in practice, and so we're all really prepared for the game. Coach Richrod does a really, really good job of preparing us. Um, but not sure yet, you know. We'll see as the as the week goes on. and. Uh, we won't know at game time. We'll know maybe on the bus headed to to Tupelo, you know. But um, we'll have an idea. And so, but the main thing is we just we're we're, we're fully supporting each other, whether whoever it is. We're, we we want the team to win. And so uh, I think that's that's what's so special about it. Because you sometimes and as competitors you get selfish, you know. But we have a really really cool quarterback room, and the fact that um, we all are competitors. Yeah, we all are in each other's corner. And so that's that's really special. I think. So the dynamic hasn't changed anything in the locker room. No, you, no, you yeah, that? yeah, yeah. He's he's supported me through it all, and uh, I've supported him when he's in there, you know. And uh, Grant, when he when he uh, gets his shot in practice, he he does a great job too. And so um, we we just like to have fun with it. Like this week, <laughs> this week Kincaid uh, wanted to go play some defense, some scout team defense, and so he went. And, uh, actually, intercepted me in practice today, and so we all, we always have a lot a lot of fun with it, and so uh, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so let's say you got Matt coming back, you're coming back. You got this Robbie Ashford kid coming back. You've got a lot of quarterbacks coming back next year. All the young guys. Yeah. You're the starting quarterback. You win the you win the position. You're you're the guy for next. This is uh, 2020 season. You still playing baseball? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I think that was the plan coming in. You know, uh, goes back to I don't know what I would. Would do if I just played baseball or just played football. I think I missed the other one too much, and so uh, I think Ro I think Robbie plays baseball too, and I think he's going to get the opportunity to play both here. And so it'd be really cool to have me, Ely, and Robbie be able to do it, you know. And so I think it'll make it easier when we all can do it together instead of just having to do it singularly. Because at that point, I think you feel like, hey, I'm the only one doing all this work. I'm the only one that's uh, laboring through all this. But when you got somebody going through going through it with you and having that much fun with you, I think. I think that'll help you along the way too. Have you talked with uh, Robbie at all? You had talked uh, to I talked to him on his visit, but other than that, I haven't really got to talk to him. Seems like a really cool guy for sure. Yeah. Good to have you um, do you guys have any focuses heading into the Texas A&M game this Saturday? Any focuses? Um, I don't want to give away too much, you know. But uh, uh, focuses would be, I think, uh, a lot of times we're, we'll have a really good game. We'll do everything close to a lot of things right and then uh, the next game we'll struggle and we'll do the, the things that we got right last week. It's like we take a step backwards, you know, and really uh, Coach Luke talked to, talk to, talks to us a lot about being consistent and so I think that's a really big part of it. If we can just be consistent, uh, consistently good, I think we'll be, we'll be in good shape for sure.